Hi everyone, Tatiana Kolovu with Live Stronger, talking about making a pitch today. Welcome and uh, thank you so much for joining us. I'm in beautiful Southern Indiana. It's fall and the leaves are changing from green to yellow and red and orange. And when I didn't live in the United States, I didn't realize how beautiful the landscape is. And I've taken more time to enjoy that. The kids now are both on the East Coast and I get a chance to send them pictures. Before we get started, I'd love to know where you're coming in from. And is it fall where you are? Is it evening where you are? Is it morning where you are? And also share with us uh, what brings you to the live today. Why are you interested in this topic? Are you interviewing? Are you meeting people that are going to give you a job? Or are you meeting people that are going to help you get a different job or possibly uh, being able to approach and connect uh, with, with your, your content? Or are they going to approve your idea? As we get started, today is what we call a workshop, a masterclass, where you can get a few more ideas on how to share your pitch and get some kind of a response or build rapport or make an impression. I must say that I have Mass, oh, Massachusetts for sure, Christine. Thanks for sharing. Fall is beautiful. Uh, I also have a course on LinkedIn Live, not specifically directed to the the um, I would say the 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 breakdown of of the pitch, but specifically directed to uh, the nonverbals and the verbals, the warmth and competence that you communicate through the pitch. Let me see. Uh, New York, uh, welcome. And India, Aditya, it's later at night. I appreciate you coming in at this time. We've got uh, someone coming in from Colombia. Ana Lucia, how is fall there? Probably not as uh, specific or as vibrant as it is as well. I know, Shelby, you, I'm kind of horrible at pitching myself or really answered the tell me about yourself. So we'll work on that today. Anastasia, Atlanta and Greece, welcome, Kalosirtes. I've got friends from London and Michigan. As you're coming in, I do tell you that this time, um, I've got a little product placement. Let me demonstrate. Oops, I spilled. <clears throat> we have a tumbler for Stronger that we give to all of our guests that come to the live. But today, if you put in the live, <clears throat> hashtag stronger. Maybe Shelby, tell them that. We have, I managed to choke myself. <clears throat> we will give and do a drawing at the end of today's show, and we will give you and send you one of these, no matter where you are. <clears throat> Apologize for that. All right. Saudi Arabia, another evening uh, follower in London. San Diego, Calispera, Calispera, San Diego, and Paris. So thank you so much for joining us. I'm, I have to tell you, there was a little bit of a delay. And I thought to myself, am I talking to myself? Am I alone here? <laughs> That's funny. All right. Hashtag stronger. Izmir, beautiful part of the world, very much gathered or, or hugged by the Mediterranean. I love to see that. Okay. North Carolina, beautiful fall there as well. Colorado, yes. <clears throat> if you're a LinkedIn user and we don't see your name, we may have a little bit of a hard time uh, identifying you in the draw. So make sure because we have several LinkedIn users. Burma, I've been to Myanmar. Yes, thank you. And Angola, wonderful, wonderful. Oman, thank you for joining us in Florida. And uh, let's get started with our program. I have to tell you, we've had to pivot a little bit today. Uh, because my guest had an interview pitching herself. So I just recorded her right before we started. But I wanted to get started by asking you, well, wait, my, Shelby, my product placement has been very effective <coughs> in getting these hashtags. All right, Lisa from Indianapolis. I get a local person close to us. Antonio, thank you for putting in your, your hashtag. So let's dive right in. The purpose that you have when you are sharing the tell me a little bit more about you is not necessarily to get a job. Initially, what you're going to do is create a connection. Have the person 
want to hear more about you. It's sort of a, it's a little bit of a courting setting. So as if you're meeting someone on a first date, do they, are they interested in you in, in finding more about you? Do they want to get to know what your experience brings to the table or to their company or to their group? So as we dive right in, we can jump in right there and say, you are maybe informing them about you. You're not always trying to persuade, or you may not be specifically trying to build rapport. And I think we we have a slide on that. Shelby, do you want me to open it? Or maybe you are uh, making them want to hear more, but for sure you're making a positive impression. That's definitely your inspiration. Or you get another chance to connect. Maybe that person is not getting to know you immediately. I do want to say that based on your LinkedIn profile and what you share on social media, this is you're also selling yourself. So don't always think that your response to the tell me a little bit about you is your pitch. My argument is that when someone goes to look you up on LinkedIn, LinkedIn, that is your pitch. So everything we talk about here today, the specific examples or your theme, your brand has to be described. One of the things that I'm not sharing in a visual here, I did this lately. I went to ChatGPT and I said, I want to know more about Tatiana Kolovu. She is on LinkedIn and she also has a newsletter. And I said, give me the three characteristics that describe her. So if that's maybe the theme of my brand, I was able to get, actually they were pretty positive. In fact, I wrote them in one of the communication courses that I share. You, I encourage you to do that for yourself. What is the brand you're putting out there? And then maybe what is the theme that that uh, inspires that you can use in your tell me a little bit about you? I love it that everyone, see my product placement, we're not selling these, we're only giving them away. Um, so let's get started by looking at the first thing. And some of this we shared in the newsletter this month. Dennis, thank you for sharing from San Antonio, 79 degrees. Just very surprisingly, it's pretty warm here as well. So the person of the, the purpose of the pitch is to create that connection, to want them to say, I want to hear more, to make a good first impression, to get invited back. You want people to remember something. What you don't want to do is download your resume in a verbal monologue that easily the person can look up, usually they have it mailed, and read the paper. They want to know something more. It's the color commentary that comes with that. So I encourage you in the newsletter that I talked about this specifically is to have a theme that you're memorable uh, by, have a theme that is difficult to replicate. What is your special sauce? So we've got a little bit of that to talk about, but before we do any of that, because I uh, teach communication and have for many years, I wanted to take a step back and look at some, what are some of the communication principles that apply in a one-to-one -one interview or virtual interview or interaction conversation. You have a sender and you have a receiver. We are gonna say that you are the sender here specifically, and the interviewer, the headhunter, uh, the, the person representing the company is the receiver, right? So always think about that. But what specifically you may say, yeah, that's really basic, but wait, wait, there's more. I want you to think about what are the preconceived notions that you have of the person that is on the other side of the camera or on the other side of the table or the, the wine glass? And what are the preconceived notions that they may have? have of you. So that's the second slide, Shelby, where it talks about, it looks at sort of the little lines in the head. We call these mental filters, or we may call these assumptions and beliefs, or in some cases, biases, negative or positive. Let me give you an example of that. I uh, teach communication and uh, in an American university uh, in, in the Kelly School of Business, but quite often, I may say in the first time of class, when I taught those classes, I may say, I know, I know, you may be thinking, what does a Greek native speaker have to teach me about communication? So I know that in their minds, they detect an accent, and should I reference that? Or maybe at times you are applying for a position that's pretty much outside of your area. 
you need to address that first. Don't let your audience be thinking about it. So you need to be thinking of what are the preconceived notions that your audience may have of you. I, I want you to always consider that. And flipping that, what may you be thinking of the person that you're talking to? What are the assumptions that you've made? And test those assumptions. Hold your position lightly. Don't just go in, lather, rinse, repeat, and do the same presentation that you do every time. So when we teach communication, we always have a sender and a receiver. We always consider some of the assumptions and beliefs that we make entering a conversation and what they may have towards us as well. Then the really important part, what we're talking about here is your message, right? The tell me a little bit about you. So your message is the, the blurb that you've created. And we do this because the key here is for this message to be different for each of you. It's not replicable. You want the person to invite you back. But it's also the channel that you're sharing this message. To be honest, being in person versus being on camera is quite different. And I know now companies are asking you to record yourself. In fact, my daughter in her interviewing process had to get in front of a computer and ask questions that were automated while she was being recorded. She was not even interacting with another person. So that changes the dynamic completely. Or you may be talking about yourself in an email, or you may be sending it in a private message on LinkedIn. The channel is going to change some of the way you deliver your message. And it's definitely not going to carry a lot of the information. All right, I better slow down a little bit here because if I have questions, I, I'm not looking at them. This is the problem of not having a, a co-host or a guest that I miss. Uh, we've had some technical YouTube question. Has the class started? Oh yes, do we record this? Yes, we do. Okay, so please, I will finish and stop with the, with the model here and I will take some of your questions. So thanks for, thanks for coming in from colder Montreal. So we have the sender, the receiver, the assumptions, the beliefs, the channel that we choose to send our message in. And here's the kicker, my friends. If you're talking to a human, even if it's virtual or in person, there has to be some way to receive feedback. Communication is a cyclical process. It's not a boom, send it all out and just pray for the best. You have to somehow get feedback on how the person is receiving your information. You want to make sure you bring up a topic that is, is relevant to them, that they don't kind of shut down. They say, oh, I'm not familiar with that, that you don't keep talking about something that's a a dead topic. You want to pick something where you have rapport with the other person. So the feedback is important. And in the newsletter, I encourage you to connect with the audience so you create that conversation. Finally, I'll take that back. Mike, welcome. I'll take that a step back again and say the context in which this is happening. Again, the channel may be dictating the context. You may be in an email back and forth, or you may be responding uh, to a LinkedIn uh, request. So the channel could, the, sorry, the context could also be formal. Uh, it could be an interview process. It could be meeting someone in a uh, in an elevator, or you may be in a networking event. Uh, I am really big on the show, the Netflix show, Emily in Paris. And there's a distinct uh, uh, situation where Emily goes to a social event and she meets a, a representative from a company and she goes right into a pitch of talking about a business idea. And the French are rolling their eyes and look at her and they said, we're at a social event. You should not do this here. We don't talk business. And she's an American used to doing that. And they say to her, uh, 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 different culture. We step away and we stay social. So what is the context that you're in? What is the culture that you're in? This is really important. And we touch upon that in just a little bit with Chabby, our guest. So agreed. Feedback is key to navigating the conversation with relevance and building rapport. My LinkedIn user friend said, and Eleni coming in from Thessaloniki, Kalispera on that end. So what questions do you have about the whole model? Maybe can we show that back again uh, Shelby, so we have the sender, the receiver, preconceived notions. Think of your message, your context, and the channel that you use. This is all related to tell me about you. Those first few minutes, you have to make an impression. Any questions? While I take a sip of 
the stronger tumbler. All right. You can jump them, jump in, and I can flex a little bit with this. So as we consider the communication scene, scene uh, always, always don't take it for granted and take a pause and think about the context. Uh, Kalispera, Anila, thank you for joining. Let's take a step back and now think of how do I come up with the theme? How do I know how am I stepping into this, this uh, workplace or this conversation or this industry? Because you may be coming in from a very different industry. And I remember quite distinctly my first degree is in exercise science. And I went and did an MBA and transitioned to organizational development and learning and development. But the thread behind all of that is really learning and personal development development. You can do it on the physical side, you could do it on the professional and, and um, educational side. And that's kind of the thread that I used when I made that transition. And many of you may be transitioning from one industry to the other. So think about what makes you specific and special. What is your special sauce? Are you an innovator? So what are examples of that? Are you a problem solver? What are examples of that? I want you to just take out a notepad and a piece of paper. How do your colleagues describe you? What are you known for? What is your brand? So if you have a theme to your pitch, you want to be bringing that up. For me, I believe in learning and I always do hashtag always be learning professional development, always wanting to improve my skills and some of my qualities uh, asking for feedback and hopefully becoming better at what I can offer whoever that I interact with, whether it's learners on LinkedIn or whether it's my audience of students. So if someone asks me specifically, my theme would be sort of a, a lifelong learner. And that's what brings me to the field of education. That could be in an academic classroom or outside. We've got more people joining us, S Switzerland and Sarah Leon. So questions on a theme. Soon here, you'll see me sort of mind that out of a student who is thinking in buckets of her experience versus thinking of what is the connection uh, between all of these specifics and what makes her uh, special and what makes her skilled to bring this to light. So always identify what your theme is. In the newsletter that I reference, I also link to the authentic uh, designing an authentic pitch course where I start with an example of a student who wanted to work for the company was John Deere, I remember. And he was coming in from an operations. I can't think it was a finance background. And I said to him, so why? I, John Deere, what, what's the connection there? And he came up with a good theme and a story. And you can see that when you look at that course and in the newsletter, we link it. So what is your special thought sauce? What is the theme? Are you an educator, a problem solver, an analytic turned marketer, whatever it may be? After you have a little bit of that, you need to be able to say, so for example, so you need to draw an example from your experience that really takes you uh, to that and, and makes that specific. It could be an example of something that you're dealing with right here, right now. It could be an example of something that has happened. When someone says to me, uh, what do you do? And I'll say, I'm an educator. And I'll say, well, let me tell you how this started. Again, I'm not looking for a job. I'm describing what I do. So if you are in the marketplace really trying to position yourself, you may want to think of something specific that relates to the audience. I like to tell a story about how I got into teaching. And this is no joke. I uh, was 19. I was a sophomore in college and I went to take an, a, I was a water polo player and I went to take an activity class uh, that was on water polo. I had one credit hour left and I thought I'll just jump in the pool and do some training and do play my favorite game. So I arrived to the class and there was no one to teach it because they, I don't know, the person had moved and I said, uh, probably very stupidly, but I said, well, I'll teach the class. Can I teach the class? I, I made an ask. So the instructor that was in charge of the elective program said, sure. 
And that kind of started my career in, or maybe it, it motivated me to be thinking about, is this something possibly that I could do? I would argue, I then teach training seminars, I may teach fitness classes, I may teach academic classes. Do you see sort of that the education uh, baseline of this is there uh, and very and very much a consistent, uh, repeated, specific? So that's the story of the example. Yay for water polo. It's, it's a pretty brutal sport, I would say. Haven't played it in a while. But that's the story I can think of being an educator. I can give a uh, specific example or a story. But for you in the workplace, they're not going to want to know about you uh, playing a sport. Or maybe that relates, but they are going to want to see how your skills specifically apply to what you do. So let me give you an example. So we talk about finding a theme and having specific examples. Finally, please, please, please always remember of that feedback loop that takes you back to your audience where you can connect with them and, and relate what you say and then get some information back. So earlier today, just today, I, I was going to invite Chabby, my student, to be in the LinkedIn Live, but coincidentally, I told her the wrong time and she had an interview. In fact, she has an interview right now where she's practicing some of this. And before we play the video, I want to tell you that in her first year, I would always hear her tell me about yourself. And I always thought that she didn't have, I would say, a very distinct theme. Maybe what I would remember her being a very outgoing and a very uh, uh, bubbly person and enthusiastic and very creative. But I couldn't put my finger on specific what was her brand as she was selling herself as an MBA student. So it was a little bit serendipitous that this came up and I asked her if she would join the live. We had a conflict. We went ahead and pre-recorded this. So we're going to play it right here. I'm going to go away. So you're not seeing double, but you will see me ask her first to do her personal pitch. And then I workshop this and take a few steps back and we tweak it. And then we do it again. We also kind of go through some of the specifics of the communication theory. Let's roll and see where we can take this. Well, welcome. Chabi Gupta is a second year MBA student at the Kelly School of Business, and she's joining me today to work through her pitch. Uh, before we get going, and I have Chabi kind of tell us, you tell me a little bit about you. I just talked about the importance of, of thinking of who is in the audience, Chabi, and Every time you meet someone, are you going through that thought process? Are you thinking, okay, what do they do? What company are they with? What's the pitch that I share? Do, does that go through your mind? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, After your class, that is one thing that I have kept in mind for sure. Yeah. So I just talked about thinking of maybe our biases or our filters of what we have for each of the people that we connect or the companies they represent. And maybe what they're thinking of us. Do you take a little time to think about what and how you present yourself, what people may see as first impressions. Are you keeping some of this in mind? Yeah, definitely. I do check the job description and what is needed of me. And I try to present myself in the best way that I can. Yeah. So do you ever think about I'm an international student or I'm female or I didn't grow up in this country? Does that kind of stay in the back of your mind? Yeah, it definitely does. And the communication style is de definitely very different from my Indian communication style. So I still have to open up and, you know, hone my uh, achievements, which is very different in our culture. We don't do that. Mm. Too much. Yeah, that's so true that you have to boast in a way that you yeah. have to be more direct in a way. Very good. So you keep that in mind, because if you didn't think about that, you would not come across as being as competitive. I just talked also a little bit about the actual message and you all craft. I know with the MBA students, we have you work on your tell me about you, tell me about you, and you get it down to two minutes. So you're ready to share it versus if you're virtual or in person. Have you ever had to maybe send a little bit of this on a LinkedIn message or an email or is it only verbal? No, definitely there are multiple places where I have been asked to tell me about myself. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a lift, maybe it's a networking place, maybe it's an interview. So you have yeah. to, you know, customize it every time yeah. uh, looking at yeah. the, your surroundings. 
Yeah. Thinking about, again, the audience and what's going on in their mind. And the last piece I wanted to, to mention, the context. So if it's in an interview setting like this, full force, but have you ever been in a in a social setting where it's appropriate to say a little bit, but then create more conversation in the US oh, yeah. at least. Yeah, definitely. In my interview with BCG, it was more like a conversation driven. Like they wanted me to, you know, chill as well and talk as well a little bit about trends. Mm. So it's completely different there. Yeah. yeah. So, so rapid, con- rapid making is more important, I feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. So we talked a lot about that. And I know you and I have had these conversations before. So what I wanted to show to our learners was taking what you've had in the past and then crafting it a little, tightening it up a little and giving it some specific direction. But but let's say we never had this conversation and I meet you in a networking call or we are at a so event at the Kelly School of Business. I work for, you know, P&G or another uh, multinational. And I say, Chabby, so nice to meet you. Tell me a little bit about you. Go. Yeah, definitely. Hi, Tatiana. My name is Chabby. I'm a second year student at Kelly. My professional career started as a subject matter expert in aviation consulting. In that role for five years, my job was to uh, implement and maintain SaaS products. Uh, That was a great role. Uh, I got to travel a lot. Um, I wanted to move to a more strategic role. That's why I transitioned to a product management role where one of my biggest challenges was to launch an existing game in the Spanish market, which gave me a lot of insights on customer behavior, which I really enjoyed. Um, at Kelly as well, I've uh, taken up a lot of uh, you know projects for both B2B and B2C clients to understand the customer behavior, uh, how different it is in the both markets. On a personal level, I'm a social media influencer and mm-hmm. I really enjoy marketing there as well. I have 200K following and I was recently published at Forbes for being a top 100 digital star. Mm-hmm. I love to take the marketing uh, you know, knowledge that our professors taught me at school to you know create strategies on my social media platform so yeah and uh, png i know is also like marketing driven so here i am uh, you know good 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 job kind of connecting somehow with me and talking about my company that i described being from so we talk about you kind of have three buckets we started in aviation consulting went into the gaming industry you talk about promoting or Uh, pushing a market in the Spanish market. You are in India at the time. That's very interesting. And on a personal level, you talk about your interactions in social media and your following Mm -hmm. with Instagram. I know you and I have talked about that is intriguing, but that's not your special sauce. For me, I want to go back. And for our learners, we talked a little bit about what is the, what is your signature? What's your theme? Help me understand. How did you get into aviation consulting? Mm-hmm. So I was an engineer. Uh, so oh, I was okay, a- Paul. You're an engineer, yeah. mechanical or mechanical, mechanical engineer in yeah. and I'm at PNG and we're talking about marketing. How I'm thinking of the the transferable skills. Can you convince me that there is a special transition to this and and make that your signature and we go from analytics to creative what is that yeah i do think there is a very a fine line uh png is a very consumer focused marketing driven company and i understood that in my uh, job role at gameshin how much analytics depends uh, or you know crafts consumer behavior so the kpis yeah. you take to the campaigns and everything it's analytics driven and you have to analyze the analytics to understand what trends basically your of consumer course. is enjoying yeah of course of course and you come in from your mechanical engineer training and you're saying i was intrigued by customer behavior but i leaned on my analytics knowledge and I bring that to the table. That is your theme, Chabby. I'm going from an analytical mind to a creative. Maybe there's many of you on the market, but you are now putting it into action because I'm sure 
to generate 200 K followers on your personal Instagram is, I think, I think you talk about women's empowerment and yeah. you come from a yeah. small town in India where uh, you, you really talk about, you know, taking your, your, your future in your own hands and making it happen. Very inspiring, but you do look at your analytics to make that happen. Right. Yeah, definitely. There is a lot of analytics and spreadsheet modeling behind that to make that happen. Okay, Great. Great. So let's, let's craft this and let's lean on that as a theme versus I can see that on your resume, what you did. So maybe you start by saying, here's your theme. I'm an analytical mechanical engineer turned marketer. And let me tell you what interests me about this so that then I can say, well, tell me how that happened. Um, one of the other things that we just talked about with, with our learners was getting a specific story. So out of those experiences and the shift from the uh, aviation consulting to the gaming and how you're entering a new market, an international market, is there a specific example? Because after you say, I am this in this and I've done this, let me give you an example. What example would you hone in? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, my analytical skills that got me a job in aviation, in the mm -hmm. gaming industry as a product manager. Mm -hmm. And there, when I used my analytical skills to analyze customer behavior and making a product which was driven towards the Spanish market, and the success of that gave me a okay. lot of confidence. Okay. Pause for a second. Let's make that specific and let's break it down. So you can say, for example, when I went from aviation consulting to the gaming industry, we had a game called, what's the name? Ludo King. That one. And okay. we had to enter a very different market than the Indian market in uh, Spain. Is How big is that market? It was 2 billion. Okay. So do you see how we're getting more specific? Uh, mm -hmm. What specific customer behavior? How are the customers different? Because if you're going to say, for example, I had to crack the code of how do we enter in a market that's very different than where the game is made and it's a big market, give your specific and give me one more detail that's going to catch me and I want to ask more. What would that be? Um, uh, the user behavior change, probably the inclination to party. I think the Spanish people really enjoy their festivities. They go all in. So the theme that we made was also a party theme. So a party theme on the game. Yeah. So you culturally had to adapt. I love that. So yeah. for example, you knew that from the analytics and you changed the the spin of the product to address that big market. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. So at the end of this, another thing that I talked with the learners is somehow connect back to me. And you did that a little bit in your initial, right? You said, what about this? How about, what do you do? So let's remember to do that so it doesn't become a monologue. Okay, we're gonna okay. do tip two. Are you ready, Chevy? Yeah, okay. From the top, as we say. Okay. So, so nice to meet you. Tell me a little bit about you. Sure thing. Hi, Tatiana, my name is Chubby. Uh, to tell me a little about uh, myself, I am an engineer turned marketer. Uh, I, I launched my career in uh, as a, a subject matter expert in aviation consulting. But from there, I transitioned to a product management role, honing in my analytical skills. And then mm -hmm. there, I used my analytical skill again to influence consumer behavior by taking, huh. uh, you know, the, by understanding the analytics mm -hmm. behind it. Sure. One big example for this would be uh, I had to transform an existing Indian game to launch it specifically for the Spanish market, which mm -hmm. was a two billion dollar, a two billion uh, big industry. And mm -hmm. uh, the consumer behavior were really different from the Indian consumers there. And uh -huh. I could really understand the intricate details because of the analytical studies that I did. I read in Great. reports, I understood the changes in the behavior and the launch of that product and the success of that product gave me a lot of confidence about my understanding of the consumer behavior through analytics. And that's oh. how I came back to Kelly to understand marketing more in detail. And Excellent. today I am here, uh, you know, interviewing for PNG. Mm -hmm. and I am super excited for that. Honestly, I was really excited about the uh, latest campaign by PNG. Can you tell me more about that? 
Sure, sure. Thanks for coming prepared. And we go on. Cut. Yeah. Excellent. Do you see how you talk about the theme? You give an example on the theme. We've tightened it a little bit and you're not talking resume. If I want to look at your resume, I can, but I want to hone in specifically and I want to remember you as the engineer turned marketer or the oh, analytical wow. mind in the marketing uh, sphere. And the example, I, I wondered how the game turned out to be more of a party fiesta yeah. type of focus and, and with, the, with the designers, the game designers open to that, I'm sure, because they made more money. So yeah. uh, fantastic. A plus. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank Take you, care. Tatiana. It's always a pleasure to do anything Thank with you. you. All right, this just happened. You're not seeing double, but because we had a conflict, we had to record it, but I think she did really well. And the behind the scenes with this specific student is she came, the very first thing she said to me is, I have 200,000 uh, followers on Instagram. I wanna say, okay, personally, that's impressive, but what does that do for the company? That shows me that you can crack the Instagram, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, algorithm but what does that do for our company so this way she can pick a theme that shows her analytic mind and then she can talk about an example that's more specific and more personal i hope that this was a good example for all of you and it's different for all of you that's why i can't give you a formula specific that works with you i would highly recommend that you have a trusted friend a mentor, someone that you can look to that you can say, help me come up with my theme. How do you see me? That's why one of the questions that I asked you was specific to how do people describe you? I want to take one question because it's such a good question from Ross. He asks, what advice do you have for introverted people who struggle to initiate communication? So Ross, we go into maybe uh, there's several resources, Susan Cain's uh, TED Talk on uh, the the power of, of quiet and the ability to connect and what a lot of introverts bring to the table is a wonderful one. Uh, Shelby, I don't know if we have a minute to find it and post it, but Ross, I would have some candid, uh, uh, um, canned, not candid, canned uh, introductions where you ask open-ended questions. Tell me more about your marketing campaign, Ross, if you do that. That's not something that that's where the person asks you specific questions or an open-ended questions is how did you get into this industry what brings you here so have some of your go-to questions that you can create to uh, have a little bit more of a back and forth i think in our communication tips class i have several uh, short clips. If you use, if you look at communication tips, there are several clips on building rapport, on connecting and starting a conversation. And then there's a whole course on uh, starting a conversation, conversation starters, I think it's called. And honestly, it may cost you more energy, Ross, but it doesn't mean you cannot do it because introversion has to do with energy. It doesn't have to do with communication skills. So I hope that's helpful. And I hope that you won't be discouraged from, uh, from starting and getting started. We are at the cusp of 40 minutes for our live today. And I know you're all hanging on to see if you won the prize, right? Mm. The Tumblr, wait a minute, we have one more question I should field. How do you emphasize on a, learn, on a learner theme when interviewing for a senior leadership position? I would not use the learner theme for that, right? If I'm going for a senior leadership position, I would look for uh, situations where I have stepped up and I have created something that didn't exist, or I have taken information and gathered it and created a product that helped us. I would look at experiences where I was a leader in a, a group. So I wouldn't, that learner, thank you for asking this because it would be definitely a very different approach. I would customize. Remember, know your audience and pitch specifically to your audience. We've got one more minute, Shelby. Can we do the drawing specifically about the Tumblr? Who's going to win it? I, wherever you live in the world, we will send you one. And if you get it, then you can post it. And this is usually for our guests. So if you did hashtag stronger in the context of a job interview, yes, 
If you asked a question and we didn't get to it, I promise you I will respond to it in the feed. Igor, sorry, I'm getting distracted from the drawing right now. Hashtag Tumblr, go ahead and enter it. And is it working? Is it working? I can't see it. All right. Ooh, these are all the people that were here. Why am I? I don't want to win it. If I win it, we have to do it again. So if you ask the question, oh, Mariana, yay. Mariana, be sure before we say goodbye to send us your mailing address so we can say this to you. 40 minutes since we started. Thank you so much for staying on. Thank you for participating. Thank you for your questions. Until next time, go out there, tell your stories, have your theme, get what you need to, and shine. Make a good impression. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.